I feel like as a female stand-up comedian, I'm meant to be here like dispelling female stereotypes, right? But like most of them are just true. <laughs> uh, like I could tell you we don't always go to the toilet in pairs, but that's because sometimes we go in groups of six, you know? <laughs> the one that's spread like a lot I see is like the difference between male and female friendships. And um, I often see it talked about that like female friendships are really kind, nurturing, supportive environments to be a part of. Um, and they can be, okay? Like I'd like to think if my friend needs anything, I'm there, drop of a hat, okay? But... <laughs> If I'm posting a group photo to social media, those bitches can go fuck themselves, okay? <laughs> uh, that is all about me, right? Like, my friend could be shitting in the mud reading a copy of Mein Kampf if I look good in it. <laughs> Sorry, bitch, I'm posting it. Uh, <laughs> I realise I've lost a lot of men in the room um, because the only time you guys take group photos is when one of you's passed out. I understand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if we had a world war now, it'd take us forever. You'd stop at every single one, like, oh, another man down, man, I'm gonna get it! Anyone got a Sharpie? Anyone got a Sharpie? <laughs> and here we later rest Ross Williams, who died a hero, <laughs> and with a penis sunburnt into his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always been so awkward around boys, right? Like, I don't, I don't understand you, I don't. Like, I've always had quite a fear of sex, okay? And I do blame Robert Patterson. <laughs> Come on, guys, relatable humour, get on board. Uh, no, because I grew up in a film called Twilight. Any fans in? <laughs> Thank you. Wrong. Um, <laughs> moving masterpiece of my generation, okay? Uh, but if you, don't, if you don't know Twilight, basically it's a film in which Robert, uh, the male lead, plays a very attractive sparkly vampire who refuses to have sex with Bella, the female lead because he's too scared he'll fuck her so hard, <laughs> she'll die. <laughs> okay, uh, that's the entirety of the first film. We remember it, yeah? Like, I don't know how well read you are on your vampires though, guys. Zero blood flow. <laughs> so I don't know how he's planning to achieve that deadly erection. <laughs> Uh, just makes me think that the entire franchise is actually just about a guy who lets a girl think he's a vampire Because <laughs> it sounds cooler than erectile dysfunction That's... <laughs> I've been trying to become more confident around the topic of sex, right? Uh, but there's still just like a lot of shame surrounding female sex and contraception and I realized this because I had to get the morning after pill recently No brag um... <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Life's going well uh... <laughs> But this is the thing, I was like, I'm a, I'm a comedian, I talk about this stuff on stage, I shouldn't be embarrassed, right? I shouldn't feel shame. So I, I strolled right up to the pharmacist, I was like, I'll have one of your finest morning after pills, please. And she went, shh. <laughs> I've got you. And disappeared into the back. <laughs> Like, what? I mean, uh, granted, it was shifty. I was getting out of the boot of our car, but I didn't. <laughs> but this is the thing. They don't, they don't just give you the morning after pill, right? They've got to give you a little interview like you've asked for a Saturday job, okay? <laughs> and they say, like, it's fine, we'll give it to you, but we've got to take you off to a discreet little room to discuss your options. And I was like, all right. Um, but, guys, this discreet little room is a glass box <laughs> in the middle of boots. <laughs> Right, might as well have fucking whore written above it. <laughs> well, they ring a shame bell in the head and shoulders aisle. It's like, come and see the woman with regrets. Five shillings a pizza. <laughs> that's not a room, is it, Sharon? No. <laughs> what a room requires is four walls. What that has is four shop display windows. <laughs> like, I couldn't be making myself look more available. I now have to put myself on sale, right? <laughs> in the whore cube where Philip Schofield instructs you to get a red ball from one end to the other without getting thrush. <laughs> and then I had a male pharmacist, okay, and at just one point during the appointment, he doesn't tell you why, it's not relevant to the conversation, but he pulls what's less of a curtain, more of a tea towel, across the slag aquarium. <laughs> so everyone's like, oh, well now she's fucking the pharmacist too! <laughs> Didn't appreciate it. Um, I'll talk you through the options because I know you were wondering, sir. Um, here are your options. <laughs> you got one pill uh, that has 60% chance of working, which I'd argue is not enough, <laughs> uh, for 16 pounds. Or you have another pill with only 80% chance of working for 35 pounds. But I did some maths and I worked out I could get two 
of the 60% chance ones, 120% chance of success, still cheaper than the 35 pound one, right? So what I'm saying is stay in school, because uh, maths saves you money, okay? And I am now pregnant, thank you. Uh, so proud to announce it on Comedy Central. Uh, I'm gonna call him Johnny, because I should have used one. Guys, I'm gonna have a